You know, there was a lot of things about Star Wars Outlaws we saw coming. Bland, boring, buggy mess on release, the shill media bending backwards to defend it from us angry Gamergate chuds. But one thing we did not see coming was of all people dogging it and saying, you know what, maybe it's not that good of a game, was Paul Tassie. Welcome back to Words of Paradise, I'm your host, Leon Nile, and yes, if you had not seen the news, the good and lots of bad of Star Wars Outlaws by Paul Tassie. You know, it's moments like these I just relish and I live for because there was a time when Paul Tassie was actually a net game for the video games industry, when he was exposing corruption, when he was talking about what goes on behind the scenes of the game industry, all the bads, the things that we turn a blind eye to because we love our 2D platformers and don't care about crunch, the man actually exuded some sort of journalistic integrity, and that has been all but lost for God knows how long now, but then you see something like this, and you realize maybe there's still a shred of it buried deep, deep, incredibly deep down in there, because even in this article where he does spend the vast majority of the time trashing the game, he tries to come up with something good about it, and, and, and to be fair, I'm sure there are, like, minuscule good things about Star Wars Outlaws. I doubt that the things that he says are good, uh, but regardless, it's just kind of amazing that even he, one of the biggest modern gaming shills, is like... I just can't do it. So we're going to get into this article before we do hit that subscribe button. I'm a nerdy news channel. I cover nerdy news every day. And reviews have come in from Star Wars Outlaws. And while they're generally pretty good, I noticed a few that were very, very bad. And it's right here. When I was first reading this article, I thought, oh, of course. He's going to talk about reviews from people like Bounding Into Comics or, or us Angry Gamergate Chuds, like I said before, making our video reviews on YouTube. No. No, he says something true. A game journalist said something truthful, I feel this is cause for celebration, break out the champagne. Now, after playing the game for a while myself, I know which category I'm in, and I don't think I'm playing more as a result. Homie is just straight up rage quitting the game. He says, nope, I'm out, ski, gonzo, deuces, I can't do it. No amount of what this game has to offer is enough to make me stay for all the net negatives, and I will give you guys a forewarning, he doesn't even mention that it is bugged on release, causing some PlayStation 5 players who got it early to need to start entirely new games because of game-breaking bugs. Yeah, he doesn't bring that up, and he still is outski on this godforsaken pixelated pieces of ones and zeros. Star Wars Outlaws is the first truly open world Star Wars game, but it does not take advantage of that in many ways that it needs to, and as such feels dated and clunky in a number of ways. I did not get far enough to comment on the full weight of the story, but here's what I've experienced so far. What? A game journalist that uh, didn't finish the game that they're reviewing? I am shocked! Shocked! Well, not that shocked. At least he's fully admitting that he, like, is quitting the game, that he's rage quitting the game. Unlike those individuals over at The Verge, they're like, Oh, yeah, Black Myth Wukong has no women, because they didn't even get to the halfway point of Chapter 2. <laughs> the bad. Way, way too much stealth. While I understand that you're playing as a scoundrel in Thieves and Outlaws, I did not realize the game would be this heavily reliant on stealth at most every turn. First, the stealth isn't good compared to other stealth games. And now, to be fair, I'm somebody who enjoys stealth games, and, uh, yeah, I, I could have told you this just from the little bits of screenshots, and, uh, not, not screenshots, but, like, little clips that we had floating around on X for weeks, if not months now, but, hey, you're not gonna listen to folks like me, you're not gonna listen to folks like Atreus, you're not gonna listen to folks like Stetter and Craig, because, what do they know? They, they're just these right-wing Nazis. Or, or just maybe we're folks that like video games and we care about video games, especially if we're gonna be spending somewhere between 70 and 130 dollars on a game. Ah, but because we don't have the same political opinions as you, our opinions are automatically rejected and invalid. Until you play the game for yourself and there's somewhat of a conscience inside you that is forced to be some semblance of intellectually honest, yeah, yeah, th th that about sums it up. There is a little more to do than sneak around boxes, hitting square, using a stun gun once in a very long recharge, or sending your pet to distract enemies while you get around them or take them down. It is extremely bare bones for something that is jammed into so many encounters, and again, I don't think the game was clear on that fact it was going to be like this in its marketing. You are certainly not Han Solo, that's for sure. 
that one paragraph alone is such an epic takedown of this game. And I don't want to give the man credit because, again, he's not doing it to appease us. And to be fair, he shouldn't be. As a reviewer, he should come out and he should be honest and he should have integrity and he should give a review full of what one could look at and think, I trust this man. But you haven't done that in so many years because you decided to pick an ideological side. Now we see you, we're like, oh, look at that. He's agreeing with us. But he's only agreeing with us because we have been objectively correct. We have seen the writing on the wall. We've been calling this out for literal months now. And now you're seeing it, but you can't give us anything. You can't be like, yep, in this instance, I was wrong. Those those Gamergate guys actually maybe do care about video games. You know, maybe maybe these folks are out there just uh, talking about something they love, and it's not just some a bunch of, you know, Donald Trump voters secretly pretending that they owned a GameCube back in 2005. Like, no, no, no. We're here because we care, Paul. <laughs> Insta-fail stealth. There are even some sections where stealth is straight up insta-fail like it's 2005. Sometimes this is when you're seen, sometimes it's when an alarm is raised, and in these larger zones, it's essentially impossible to track down an alarm raiser, and unlike Far Cry, where you might just fight off reinforcements, here you will just go and auto-fail the mission. The bad checkpointing this can offer can, can often send you way back, getting caught in any part of town, for instance, making you thrown out a totally different entrance than the one you even came in, and getting back is enormously annoying. Combat is middling. I'm fine not being a Jedi. I'm actually glad not being a Jedi for once. You know what? I agree with you, Mr. Tassie. I really do. You want to know what my favorite Star Wars game of all time is? Star Wars Shadows of the Empire, where you play as Dash Rendar, another Han Solo ripoff. Although he's a Han Solo ripoff that you read the Expanded Universe, actually has his own character. Is actually really cool. In fact, I like Dash Rendar better than Han Solo. I know that's probably gonna get me in some hot, some hot water, a little bit of trouble, but hey, at least you know that I'm a legitimate Star Wars fan who reads the EU and doesn't just fake it, so there is that. The Division bullet sponge problems with many enemies, this was made by the Division Studio, and the strangest decision was to have K use a pistol and pistol only with a few different mods for the entire game. Another weapon you pick up is temporary and will be lost when you do essentially anything. Leave a zone, perform an action, get on your bike, anything, you drop it, you're shooting a pistol for 90% of the game when you're not doing take takedowns behind boxes. Those same takedowns we were criticizing for, again, frame rate being bad, glitches being bad. Oh yeah, she also just sort of uses the back of her hand to lightly tap on a stormtrooper's noggin and apparently makes him go full knockout. Um, there is so much about this game to criticize and he's getting some of it, which again, I can respect, but also, d home, this, this gotta be like the biggest I told you so ever. Speeder bikes. Lots of bizarre decisions were made when things are too fragile to go down most cliffs so you're dying or blowing up frequently. But the weirdest thing is that you'll be chased down by enemies firing at you on the speeders and you cannot fire back. There's literally no fire a gun while riding a speeder system except for getting hit enough to charge up your adrenaline meter to do your dead eye attack, which genuinely feels like something they forgot to do, so it makes no sense. Dated character modeling. You mean... For all of us grifters that talked about how this character model looks nothing like her actress, how they, and I get it, you're not talking about how the model is ugly like we are, which, because she objectively is when you look at the model she's based off of, which is something that the Japanese studios and these other Eastern studios have been able to nail perfectly. It's a little strange to say that we don't have the technology for that, but no, 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 you're just straight up saying the character model is bad, which is something else we were talking about. It wasn't just, oh, look at K-Vest, she's not hot enough. It was it was a bad model, and we've seen that from the trailers and from the moments that gameplay was released. When IGN released over 10 minutes of gameplay footage, and we roasted the shit out of it. What, did you think it was going to get better three weeks later when it was set to release? Because this footage isn't exactly very old. But no, now you're acknowledging what, again, we've been saying for literal months, Paul. <laughs> All I'll say is the good section environments often look gorgeous, but outside of cutscenes and character modeling, this game is terrible and looks exceptionally dated. Talking to NPCs feels like it hasn't evolved since five Assassin's Creed's ago. I want to remind you guys that, um, this is the biggest budget Ubisoft game ever made, and even Mega Shill Paul Tassie is saying it looks like something from five Assassin's Creed's ago. How bad does this game have to truly be for this dude to stop lying through his teeth in his articles 
and actually speak some truth. Broken clocks are right twice a day, my friends. Talking to NBCs feels like it hasn't evolved since the last five Assassin's Creed. They often look like styro mannequins. No, every game does not need Last of Us level detail and mocap, mo mo cap, but this is very, very bad and jarring and poor for a story-driven game. And then there's the lot picking. He goes on to bitch about the lot picking. Um, this is the good. Now, here's the good. A living Star Wars world. Stop it. Get some help. I have trouble believing this, considering this is Disney Star Wars, and Disney Star Wars is not Star Wars, and I imagine the world they have built does not reflect what George Lucas had done with his work at all. But if you want to say a living Disney Star Wars world, maybe I would agree with you. Anyway, Outlaws does feel alive, like you're existing in a real Star Wars world, especially in the population-dense parts of the map. I think the attention to detail here is excellent, and the visuals attached are top-notch. Again, outside of actual people, they did a stunning job with lots here. Kay and Nix. I like them. That's stupid! You're stupid! Stop being stupid! You don't like them. Nobody likes them. You're saying you like them because you gotta say you like them. Because if you say you don't like the strong wham and a color, uh, you're going to be just rejected and kicked out of the industry entirely. You can talk about how the graphics are bad, you can talk about how the mechanics don't work, but if you straight up denounce the strong wham and Oh, homie gonna be looking at a job for bounding in the comics and that'd be the best he can get. Not to denigrate bounding in the comics, I'm just saying there's a difference between bounding in the comics and Forbes. No offense, guys, you know, I love you. But the point is, you don't like them. You don't gotta say you like them, you don't gotta pretend you like them. Or even if you do, okay, fair enough, but I don't think that constitutes its own spot on this list considering as a game, nothing else has been good aside from the visuals of, of the open world. So, uh, are our characters gonna save it? No. I enjoy Kay as a character and think she would be a fun scoundrel if I did not heavily dislike almost all gameplay in the game. She deserved better. I like, like Nyx too. Him jumping on a guy's face so you can punch him did not get old. Yeah, sorry, that's it. That's all I've got. Homie listed two positives. The environments are pretty. I like the character of K. And even when he was talking about liking the character of K, he, he looped back to how awful the actual gameplay was. Is this the Paul Tassi redemption? No, no, it's probably not. It's probably way too early to call something like that. But it is interesting to see. I am definitely not as far as reviewers, and this is not a review with a score, as I don't score games I don't finish. I will give you, and I mean this genuinely, Polly Boy, if you ever see this, I will give you respect for this. You not scoring a game you haven't finished is far more than we can say for folks over at Screen Rant, The Verge, Kotaku, Polygon, IGN, uh, The Mary Sue, and I can go on and on. And, and yes, I know those are your colleagues, and you're probably upset that I'm calling them out like that, but again, you, I guess in some instances, are better than them, because you acknowledge you didn't finish the game, you're honest about the fact you didn't finish the game, and you're not going to give it a scoring grade because you didn't finish it. Again, every now and again, the journalistic integrity does creep back into this guy's soul. Uh, I, have, <laughs> I have court problems, the game I will uh, will not go away, and in some instances get worse. As much as I'd like to see the rest of the case story, if I'm not enjoying essentially anything about how the game actually plays, I'm not going to subject myself to more... This is a two for two on Mr. Passy, uh, Tassi. Like, like, he's gotten two dubs in a row when it comes to talking about Concord and when it comes to talking about this. Because, again, his Concord video, or, or article, I should say, yeah, it was filled with copium. But there was also actually a lot of truth to it. We went over it on, uh, um, Countercast earlier this week, so go back and watch that if you haven't seen it. But, uh, yeah, all in all, I'm... I'm flabbergasted. I, I Again, I don't think we're seeing a redemption art for Paul, Paul Tassi. I don't think we're seeing a redemption art for games journalists in general. I think the only good games journalism you're going to get are out of other YouTubers that, you know, actually care about video games. You're going to get some out of Smash JT's website. You're going to get good game journalism out of Bounding Into Comics. You're going to get good game, uh, jam, game journalism out of Niche Gamer. Uh, but again, just because it's good, it doesn't even mean it agrees with me ideologically. No, no, no. Bounding Into Comics, Niche Gamer, Smash JT, they've all released article after article of things that I heavily disagree with. But at least I trust them and believe they are being honest when they are making these assertions. And that's something you can't say about modern day games journalism, which is why it comes as such a shock that Paul was as critical of the game as he was. I gotta say, if, if it weren't for the past, oh, I don't know, five to ten years of his actions, I would be relatively impressed. But I want to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments down below, or let me know on X, where you can find me at Bolt the Word. And please do subscribe. I am a nerdy news channel. I cover nerdy news every day. Not always about the video game industry, but anime, movies, music, Magic the Gathering, you name it. Check me out on Instagram at Words of Paradise underscore Leon. And become a member for $4.99 a month. You can join the Discord. Choose the articles I go over on a day-to-day -day basis. Choose the videos I react to on my Friday night live streams. And of course, 
must get involved with over 80 other vital idols. We are a bright, beautiful, glowing, vibrant community that I cannot wait to grow even further because we do care about diversity, but only one kind of diversity. Diversity of thought. If that's interesting to you, join the Discord, hit subscribe, and until next time, it is all here in the Nerdosphere. This has been Words of Paradise.